First of all, thank you for the opportunity to speak to you. Uh, in the spirit of collaboration and cooperation, I've been authorized by the school board to speak to you this evening and provide you with an update as to the current status of our budget deliberations. Our finance committee has met twice in the past week for more than seven hours with administrators, other board members, and members of the public present. While no one relishes the work that we've done and must continue to do, I hope everyone who is present can agree that we've approached our task with rigor, and thoughtful deliberations. We've explored many options in terms of expenses and revenue adjustments with a clear understanding that the Council had unanimously agreed that the pro proposed reduction from our portion of the requested tax burden would amount to no more than half a million dollars, or 500000 While this amount is still significant and not without consequences that I will touch on in a moment, we hope that based on the unanimity and of acceptance of the initial reduction at the first reading, the Council will agree that no further reductions will be mandated this evening with the second reading. So where are we now? Process-wise, the intent has been to keep the budget adjustments from negatively impacting core academic programs and services that would most, be most detrimental to the student learning. School leadership team has proposed a $250,000 in reductions consisting of the following a $90,000 reduction in district-wide salaries attributable to staff turnover. We're hoping to keep this reduction from having an impact on the quality of new employees that we're able to attract and hire. A $45,000 reduction in stipends, contract services, and supplies. We acknowledge that this will reduce some access to instructional resources available and staff coverage. A $65,000 reduction in electricity, gasoline, and other transportation costs. We expect this decision will impact student field trips and access to after-hours school facilities. A $50,000 reduction in the school nutrition program <coughs> based on a projected savings from a recently announced shared food services agreement with the town of Cape Elizabeth. Additionally, the board collectively identified $70,000 in further reductions impacting the areas of staff development, course reimbursements, teacher stipends, and IT contracted services, bringing the total of our reductions to $320,000. These reductions will be felt across all of the schools, but it is when we attempt to move beyond this point to close the remaining $180,000 gap that we lose our ability to preserve current programs and services. If we continue to look entirely at expenditures and we adhere to our shared belief that core academic programming should be preserved at all costs, then it falls to the areas of extracurricular sports and co-curricular activities to make up the remaining $180,000 gap. 
The board fully acknowledges that it is our prerogative to determine what areas of the budget will be impacted, and that the council is in no way mandating specific reductions in these areas. We also fully realize that the mere mention of reductions in these areas could be very easily misconstrued as an attempt to agitate and inflame the general public. While the board continues to deliberate these dramatic measures, I will give you an indication of what programmatic impacts are being considered. Elimination of all clubs at the Wentworth School. Elimination of chorus, computer, jazz band, Lego club, theater, WSMS News, and the yearbook, as well as all sports programs at the middle school. Finally, at the high school, the elimination of outside band activities, chorus, ecos club, jazz band, key club, mock trial, model UN, natural helpers, Oak Hill players, as well as, uh, I believe it's ball cheering, boys wrestling, and boys and girls tennis. It is this very reason, however, that I'm before you tonight. In spite of all the hours of deliberation, we can't come to a consensus in terms of the above proposed reductions. Instead, I'm here to appeal to you in all the spirit of continued collaboration and problem solving to partner with us to look to our revenue stream to reach a solution. I believe we can all acknowledge that the school's revenue sources are minimal and declining. In the course of deliberation, we've considered increasing user fees. Even if we double all the fees, we can't close this $180,000 gap. The Council has already requested an additional GPA funding received during the budget be applied to tax relief during this year, a process that, while understandable, is still unprecedented and limits our ability to rebuild our fund surplus. Utilizing some of this additional fund balance could close the gap and still maintain the Council's desires to keep townwide fund balance at or above the desired level of 8.2%. It serves us all well to craft a solution that will not throw us back into a cycle of program loss and attempting to rebuild, a cycle that we all know too well. We hope that together we can serve the best interests of the Scarborough community by finding a solution that will keep our students' programs intact, reduce the tax burden by the Council's prescribed half million dollars, and allow both the Board and the Council to endorse the revised budget and get it passed on July 7th. Thank you. Thank you. So, now we are entering the public hearing section, so if you would like to speak, please come up to the podium. Feel free to line up. Please state your name, address, and you have three minutes. <coughs> Good evening. My name is Dave Green. I live at 135 Beach Ridge Road. First of all, this is the biggest crock of baloney I've ever heard in my life. You're giving the school board more money than they had last year, and now they got to cut stuff? To me, that's kind of really poor uh, management of your money, my money, taxpayer money. And I will tell the council as a whole that I am disgusted with you people that you even started at a half a million dollars to cut out of that budget. It should have been 1.5 and negotiate from there because the people in this town are sick of this. And for all the people that wanted to move to this town because they thought Scarborough had deep pockets, Please, show them they don't, and tell them don't let the door hit you in the derriere on the way out. Because I can't afford it anymore. And I say this every year down here. You know, and those of you that don't think there's enough money in that school budget, get your checkbooks out and write them a check. It's a donation. Do it. Don't make me do it, because I can't afford to. And I'm... Sixth generation in this town, <clears throat> and don't tell me that they can't make do with what they're getting. Thank you. Right on up. Mike Turek, 11 Bayberry Lane. Tonight you're going to hear a lot of impassioned pleas about the school budget. I will not make one. The council is well aware of my position, and I believe that most of you have already made up your mind anyhow. What I will say is the municipal budget was presented as a level services and it came in at a reasonable amount of money. The school budget was also presented as a level services, originally came in approximately 12% increase and now stands at approximately 6% increase. 
if the services remained level, why is one increase so much more than the other? This doesn't pass my common sense test. There's something wrong with this picture. You did a good job, in my opinion, of making an initial attempt to reduce the school budget. My only plea is please do not reverse field tonight and add more money back into the school budget. Voters by a large vote told you that the school budget was too high. Please listen to them. <clears throat> Thank you. Roger Delaware, 100 Manson, Libby Road. I'm a 69-year-old life taxpayer in the community, 12th generation in this community. Uh, all departments share in this problem of taxation. It isn't just the schools. We don't seem to be able to distinguish need from like to have. And that has always been a problem with all kinds of folks. We are, as a town, supported the schools most recently with two new schools, which have all but crippled our credit. If we are able to make the proper decisions in the issues of town expertise, we should look at the administrators of all disciplines in the town, not just the schools, but the public works and the police and everybody. And uh, probably uh, in the last few years, we have asked these people to come up with small increases in their budget. Most of them have complied. We've had to make adjustments here and on, but they, generally they follow the, the uh, path. Uh, but we have had little cooperation from the schools. They've been asked for the last 20 years, I've been following it along, that it might be better for the town and the schools if the education department hired a school mon money con comptroller and drop a, maybe an assistant superintendent to be able to afford this fellow. Uh, allowing the superintendent to put his efforts into the area of advanced education for our children, for the betterment of our children. I believe it would improve relations with the council and our manager and treat the taxpayer more fairly. I think we've been getting a bum rap for a long time, and this, this dog and pony show has been going on for over 20 years. And nobody seems to want to step out of the box and look at it from a different direction and maybe get some more input from a uh, different source that uh, prepares the money for the school. I mean, uh, maybe we need another person in there so the superintendent can just do his job with his children. And I'm sure he will do a good job at that. Thank you for your time. I hope you can work it out. Hi, my name is Amy Colton to Hope Lane. Uh, you have an extremely important task before you this evening. The final school budget for 2015-2016 will have a great impact on the experiences our children will have in our schools. Money for our public schools is something that I support wholeheartedly and without fail. There are many areas I see where good enough is good enough, but the school budget and spending plan is an area where I do not expect to settle. The children in Scarborough, like all other children in the world, are bright and curious. Public schools from kindergarten through grade 12 are a tremendous opportunity to feed children's curiosity and to extend their skills and competencies. They will leave us after 12th grade and they will go on to do amazing things. The growth of their minds, their bodies, their friendships and their confidence while they are with us impacts the quality of the world we will see in 10, 20, 30 years and beyond. As a taxpayer in Scarborough, I'm asking that you put forward a budget with minimal cuts to the budget which went forward to the vote a few weeks ago. I do not support additional cuts to the budget. The quality and desirability of our town is directly affected by the quality of our schools. The school budget is not the place to look for saving additional money. Thank you. Good evening. Betsy Gleistein, 14 Longmeadow Road. I'm here tonight to ask the town council to show their trust in the people of Scarborough. I find it frustrating and maddening that I have received two communications, one from the superintendent and one from the athletic director, warning of the drastic cuts to programs, activities, and athletics if operating budgets are pushed 
uh, cuts are pushed through. In April, there was an uproar from parents about changing the school calendar from 10 to 32 late start days, which would have resulted in a reduction of more than 4.8 days of instructional time. Even now, the high school is moving from 10 to 19 late start days for reduction of 1.99 instructional days. We were told that this professional development is a necessity and the board would prefer not to cut instructional time, but the budget would not support paying for professional development. So on the one hand, we are told that a $500,000 reduction in the operating budget will cause drastic cuts and there is not enough money to fund both increased professional development and current and levels of instruction in the high school. But on the other hand, we are told that funding laptops for every high school student is de facto a priority, so important that the people of Scarborough cannot even weigh in on this issue. This council has put the money in an untouchable category. Can anyone on this council truly tell me whether or not the taxpayers prefer to fund the school operating budget and instructional time versus laptops? It was the determination of the BOE that laptops and professional development are a priority. It is their job to decide these types of issues, although politically I thought they'd be wise to request a referendum vote for you regarding the laptops. But the buck stops with this council. It is your job to know the people's priorities. Indeed, you are encouraged by the spirit, if not the letter of our charter, to hear from the voters on capital expenditures because we taxpayers will be on the hook for them for years to come. Every capital expenditure increases our future baseline budget and very well may lead us back to this same room, same place, same time next year. It has been said that the average person cannot understand the laptop program. While I do not agree with this sentiment, I respect the position of those who hold it. But I tell you what I believe in my gut that the people of Scarborough know. We are being given a false choice by this council between cutting the operating budget and providing laptops to every high school student regardless of the family's ability to pay and regardless of the merits of a program that has not been fully accepted by the public and which sadly we do not have time to debate in this forum. I end with this. I call on this board tonight to reconsider your vote to the laptop program. Put this expenditure on the budget referendum. You need to hear from the voters of Scarborough about their priorities. They may very well fund both, but you need to give them, give us, a real choice about priorities. In that process, you will show that you trust the voters to know best, whatever their decision may be. Thank you. Deborah Few Shirtman, 15 Fairway Drive. Though I'm sure many of us would much rather be somewhere else, here we go again. I know as politician you must acknowledge the recent vote and cut the school budget by more than a minuscule amount. But a half a million? Really? Let's look at the vote from a different perspective. Of the roughly 15,000 eligible voters in Scarborough, approximately 1,700 stated the budget was too high. That's 11% of all eligible voters. The day after the election, the Portland Press Herald ran down uh, area Arab school budget vote outcomes. Falmouth, Westbrook, Cape Elizabeth, Cumberland, Yarmouth, Old Orchard Beach, South Portland, Wyndham, Yarmouth, Freeport, Pownall, Saco, Gorham, and Sanford all approved their increased school budgets. Scarborough was the only town listed that did not. Reading this, I was ashamed that the area towns got the importance of funding quality education where my town did not. Many of these towns have higher tax rates, higher per pupil spending, and have one-on-one -on -one technology for their high school students. Many of these towns have similar or higher percentage of residents on a limited income than Scarborough does. Do we want our town to become just a picturesque seasonal vacation slash retirement community? I had been proud of our town's elected officials this year. There seemed a true respect for the work of the school board and the town councils, councilors kept the lines of communication open and everyone worked on budget issues together. The council stated they were putting forth a reasonable school budget. There were community dialogues. Officials like Donna Beely and Councilor Donovan wrote great articles in the local papers explaining the complexities of the school budget process. Unfortunately, there were still lots of inaccurate information spreading around town and in newspapers which undercut these efforts. Now we come to the council's proposed half a million cuts. A town council was mem member was quoted as stating the kids would do okay with this. This sends the wrong message. This gives the impression to the anti-tax 
the anti-public education, the why do I have to pay for education when I don't have school kids, the 11% of the no voters folks, that they were indeed right and there is a lot of fat to cut. Let's call a spade a spade and have the council state in plain English that a budget reduction will not be cutting fat. It will be substantially cutting quality. A town that does not provide a high quality education for its children as a town that is not positioning self, itself to be a diverse, competitive, and growing community. In response to the Council's proposed for a half a million cut, I am asking, please don't. Thank you. Larry Hartwell, 9 Puritan Drive. Uh, the guy with the numbers. Just as a refresher, the last three years, our budget increase has been 5%, six something last year, and it stands at 6.8% this year. The cut in the budget is an additional $2.5 million from the local taxpayers this year. So we've cut the re you've cut the, um, the request from $3 million to $2.5 million. This year, as she was, a number of the towns of the F have passed their budgets. South Portland, for one, passed theirs. What was their increase? Three and a half percent. Cape Elizabeth, remember Cape Elizabeth? Our, we hold them up to measure by. Theirs increased by one and a half percent. You were asking almost eight percent, and the people said no. It's been voted down every year for three years, and I think one of those years twice. Um, as far as inflaming the public, I was at, at that meeting this morning. It was painful. It was painful for everyone in the room. Um, it was painful because what they were given to cut were clubs and sports. They were looking for $180,000. As I look at the sheet of what they've discussed in the past meetings, out of the 11 million or so, 11 million in salaries, they reduced it by 89,000. I see no discussion of the hundreds of positions in the school district that were even considered to be cut by a half a percent, a half a person. The 180,000 dollars that they need, if they could find by diligently going through all the different positions in, in our system here, and if they could come up with three positions, that would probably cover the 180,000, and we wouldn't have to be talking about eliminating clubs and eliminating sports. And um, I think that's an area that they should have looked at. It represents 70 or 80 percent of their budget. Thank you. Hi, my name is Amy Chamberlain. I'm not with numbers, but I'm on um, Ryefield Drive here in town. I have three students in the system, worked for the system, and I have to first say thank you for the town council and the school board and school members, um, administration, because it's a very tough position to be on. I've been on that side. Um, it's very disheartening that we can't get more people to keep following with this in our town. Um, I have to say I'm a very disappointed taxpayer. Um, I know how much an increase to someone's taxes can affect them. My husband and I see that on a daily basis with our real estate company and how it affects people buying in Scarborough, not able to buy in Scarborough anymore because it has gone up in the past three years. But we try to explain to them it's not because it's going up due to your trash or due to your town, you know, different things. It's going up because of education. <coughs> education is, is key. And it's the only key we have for our children. And we really need to look at it that way. Whether you are retired, whether you have a family of five or six kids, or you have no children, that is, that is what it is. But we need to look at it as a whole for our town, not just the fact that I can't afford to pay it. I had a difficult time. We just bought in Scarborough three years ago. Each year it keeps going up. My taxes keep going up. It's scary, but I know why it's going up. It's going up because this town has decided again and again to turn down education, to cut education drastically. And I will tell you, as a town person who's very involved with the education department, I volunteer all the time because it's very important because we don't have the money we need. We are losing 
close to, I think, about 55%, if I'm wrong, from the state to give us our money for education. <laughs> We're being cut down to 11%. I hear that's coming back. That could come back to us. We don't know that. So we really need to be careful about what is going to get cut. I don't want anything cut, period. I, I think it's, it's, an attract, it, it's just awful. The one thing that I have an issue with is we have more people in this town of Scarborough showing up to vote for dogs in the Piper issue than we do for our education. And I'm sorry, that says a lot for this town. And I love this town, and I'm involved with this town. But I am extremely disappointed that we cannot get our town people out to vote for education, but they do for dogs. And I'll stand here and tell you, you may hate me for saying this, I love dogs, I love animals, but I think our children should come first before dogs. And I really think this town needs to wake up, get up, get out, and pay attention to this. It's sickening to me. I'm a stay-at-home mom now. I have three children that I have to keep up with their education just as much as anybody else because there are things they can't do in the school department because it's cut year after year. And we're complaining about right now, if we're looking at, if we went back to it, that 2.8 increase in taxes, $300 a year. I know that's a lot of money for a lot of people, but when you really look at it, per house, per Scarborough, it's not. Yeah, you are out of time. Thank you very much, and good luck, and please do not cut. <coughs> that's a tough one to follow. Um, Liam Summers, uh, Holmes Road. Um, you know, Albert Einstein defined insanity by doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. Here we are, year three in a row that we're faced with a protracted battle over the school budget. Same thing, over and over. So to the town council, I ask, you were elected to provide leadership and guide the town through these issues. Have you done that? Have you led from the front? Or have you stood aside while the Board of Education has attempted to navigate these waters by themselves, pitting the town citizens and the Board of Education against each other? What have you done to provide a workable solution for the Board of Education to solve this problem and be leaders in this area? To the Board of Education, you were elected to watch over our schools and create a conducive learning environment and ensure our children receive the best possible education the town can afford. You are also charged with having the ability to put forth a reasonable budget, one that balances the needs of the school with the ability of the taxpayers to afford those. Have you listened to the taxpayers? Have you compromised? And have you been realistic in your expectations of the town citizens to be able to continue to support an <coughs> annually escalating budget? A $275 property tax increase this year is not too much to bear for most people. But an annual increase every year of $275 becomes too heavy a burden to carry. That's where we're at. Your operating budget dictates that you start your budget at 4.1% to run a level service. That's what you need to match last year's services. That's a lot. You need to address your core issue of an operating expense that starts at 4.1% before you add anything to it. And to the citizens, it is our responsibility to support a reasonable budget, to understand the costs associated with a good educational system that we all want, and to not create an environment of conflict every time the budget season rolls around. We have a social contract to participate in funding the education of our children. Have we been cooperative? Have we participated in the process? Have we listened and compromised as we ask others to do? And have we held our elected officials accountable when they fail to perform their duties for us? We can all continue to draw the lines in the sand and continue to wage a war that will take its toll on everyone involved. Or we can finally set aside our biases, our personal agendas, and our preconceived notions that nothing can ever change and act like the leaders, the educators, and the adults <clears throat> that we're supposed to be, and establish a reasonable and fair and workable solution to this problem. Until we're ready to do this, we will continue to repeat this over and over again.
I'm Wallace Fengler. I live at 233 Holmes Road. I'm 75 years old and I was working on my birthday because I'm still needing to work to earn the money to pay my taxes. I have a pension and my pension is going up anywhere from zero to two percent while the school budget's been going up a lot faster than that. What I haven't understood is the price of gasoline and diesel fuel and heating oil has gone down and yet we talk about the state cutting funding and nothing is mentioned about any savings that have come up in the last year due to lower fuel costs. It feels like the school board and the superintendent only represent parents with school-aged children and so I need the town council to represent me and that feels like why there's a conflict every year is because it's crazy to ask for 8% when my wife that uh, passed away, uh, Sylvia Fengler, taught in this school system for 33 years and we never had issues come up like this at that time. There was foresight. They built more of a high school than they needed at the time because they knew that the thing, uh, the future school aged children was going to expand. We need more foresight. Thank you. Anybody else? If you do wish to speak, please do line up right up at the podium. Name, address, and three minutes. <coughs> Sorry about that. I thought there was a big line back there. <laughs> Um, this is my first ever town council meeting. My name is Carol Rico. I live at 11 Hawthorne Circle and uh, I guess I just waited for years watching this from a distance and um, just felt compelled uh, for two key reasons to come talk tonight. So um, the first one, just given this $500,000 situation, um, I've lived in Scarborough um, since 1993. I have two children, one that just graduated high school, and um, I want to tell you that um, he had senioritis in a big way. And I can't be more thankful to the lacrosse team um, for giving him an inspiration um, through all of his four years, really, um, to be the best student he could be. And um, really, it touched my heart to read a, a little write-up that he had um, trying to apply for a scholarship. And I'll just read you a brief segment. It says, the lacrosse team is a second family. Ask any athlete what the team means to them, and they will all answer similarly. This is my family. You've got to protect the family and work together so that you work well together and get better. Being a part of the lacrosse team has taught me to do better in school and to push myself to be the best athlete I can possibly be. I never want to be the weak link on the team. And he's not, he's not a kid of a lot of words, but it really touched my heart to read that. And I'm sure he's not the only student athlete that feels that way. Um, sports motivates kids. Having gone through the lacrosse season recently and had some extended family visit and go to the games, it was very profound when my nephew, who lives in a different town, said, this is a great school. You know what he meant? He only had seen the athletics of it. He had only come to a, a lacrosse game. He hadn't gone to the classroom. He meant it's a great community event. It's well done. The kids try hard. The coaches are there to support them. I have a middle school student who has been for three years in the uh, middle school um, theater team, theater group. He's one of those precocious kids that is so precocious, uh, he doesn't always bond well with his peers, but when he's in the theater team, he's with a group of kids that are just like him, really into theater, and that has, has been a huge uh, source of friendship for him over the years. It's helped him get through his scholastics as well. So my other hat I wear is as a real estate broker. Uh, last year I had four sides closed. I did about $3.6 in business, and it was all in the surrounding towns. I tell you because I want you to know that I'm an active broker. I never hear uh, people say, 
you know, that I can't live in Scarborough because the taxes are too high. This is my experience with it. Um, I hear people say, I want to move to Scarborough because they have a really good school system. And I think when someone goes to sell their house, they want to keep that in mind. So thank you very much, and I hope we can work collaboratively and just put that out to the other communities that we get along here in Scarborough. Thank you. Good evening, I'm Donna Bealy, school board chair. Look, there was a shift in costs of $1.1 million to our town. This caused the school board and the school department to come in with a very lean budget on the expense side. The defeated budget gave the schools less than a 1% increase in new spending. And remember, half of that was in required special ed costs. Plus, it was reduced by 90000 as well at your request. There are likely some in town who cannot afford the tax increase. The defeated budget would have had the effect of less than $5 per week on the average $300,000 homeowner. For those unable to pay their taxes, there needs to be other services or programs in our state and in our town to assist them. That is what the programs like Circuit Breaker and the Homestead Exemption were designed to do. Our town and our state needs these programs and more. The loss should not be to our students and our teachers. That is wrong. It is just wrong. With less than 1% of the defeated budget in the new spending, parents especially and all voters alike need to know that these potential reductions come at a huge loss to our students, our staff, and our community. As elected school board volunteers, we have nothing to gain by being deceitful regarding the information we have presented. Some have implied that the school board advocates for as much as they can get. This may be true elsewhere. It is not true in this town. We are very aware of the stress on our neighbors of the tax burden. That is why the level services budget both finance groups originally agreed to is what was brought forth. Our town needs to come together just as the school board and the town council has in our attempt to propose a lean, honest to goodness, realistic budget. I would urge you to find a way to lessen the impact on our children and young adults. Otherwise, the result will be a loss to our students and our families in the way of programs, sports, and activities that they need to be productive young people in this community. Thank you. Good evening, my name is Jeff Ertman. I live at 15 Fairway Drive. I apologize if anything that I'm gonna say here this evening has been already stated um, before me. I only just arrived 10 minutes ago. Uh, coming from a, a prior engagement that did not allow me to arrive until 7.30. I first want to say thank you and a word of appreciation to the school board and to members of the council who truly did work in collaboration this year. I mean, coming into February and through March, it was, a, oh boy, here we go again with contentiousness, with the rancor that has uh, dominated uh, this process over the past several years, and that was different this year. Of uh, particular note, I want to thank uh, Councilors Babine and Donovan for their uh, public words and letters that really tended to provide support to the entire process and, uh, and really providing backing to the hard work um, and responsible work that the school board um, was providing in order to try and bring a responsible budget to the, uh, in, into the equation, into the mix. Um, Schools are a uh, responsibility of the community to, uh, of all members of the community in which we all live. Um, I would uh, 
tend to want to um, to have support provided at all levels of learning. I, I think we all would, would tend to agree that with that. I would suggest that as a community, we need to provide support at all levels of living, <clears throat> from school-age families to community members who do not have kids to community members who have had kids who have gone out of the school system to retirees who live here in town. It's all incumbent upon all of us to ensure that the schools are supported at the level in which we've all become accustomed. For those who've, who've been through a public education setting in their own communities, be it here in Scarborough or uh, people who have settled uh, into Scarborough from communities in which they grew up, if you are uh, the, who you are because you've benefited from a public school setting, you need to support and to continue support the public school system. I understand that a cut probably needs to be made because the voters have spoken, um, even though I don't necessarily agree with that stance and that posture. Um, I believe that a cut that has been, cuts that have been proposed here by the council for the most part have been responsible. However, a cut of two million, a proposed cut of $2 million is entirely irresponsible and doesn't seem to um, meet the needs of the system um, that we've all come to grow to appreciate. Um, I'm running on short on time here, but I would support you, uh, excuse me, I would urge you all to continue to support the budget and the process uh, that has uh, been part of a collaborative effort, both of the council and of the school board, um, and please continue to support our schools. Thank you. Anybody else wish to speak? <laughs> <clears throat> Good evening. Hi, Mark DeMauro. I live on uh, Pleasant Hill Road. Um, <clears throat> watching the process over the last several months um, became increasingly discouraging as we saw the political momentum increase against the, uh, uh, the school budget. Um, it was an interesting um, and I thought a positive development when the uh, Smart Taxes Group got organized and began to gather information and, and disseminate information, but it became evident at that time that uh, what their agenda was, there was very little discussion about what we buy, what we get uh, for our dollars. <clears throat> and as the, uh, uh, as the process continued through the last few weeks, I was reminded of an experience. I, I had the opportunity to be on two school committees over a nine-year period in northeastern Massachusetts, West Newbury, and, and the uh, Pentucket Regional School District. And every year, we would go through the same process. Our administrators uh, uh, would work very hard with the school committee. They would beat down every uh, possible cost and come up with a decision and that would be attacked. And, and, uh, um, but fortunately, most of the time, we weren't driven back to have to reform our, our budget. Sometimes we did. But I remember one, one young lady in particular who had kids in elementary school who did a simple exercise that I'm guessing many of us have done, and that is that <coughs> She took the total expenditure of the school budget and she divided by the number of kids and then she divided that by the number of days and she came up with an hourly rate at that time, now we're talking 15 or 16 years ago, of somewhere in the neighborhood of $4 an hour. So I did that and at, at the point that our budget was around $40 million, and, it, and we come out to about $70 a day and it works out to about 7 bucks an hour if you're assuming an average uh, an average 10 hour day. Now, <clears throat> it just strikes me that we're getting a, a really a hell of a bargain for the amount of money that we're investing. And, I, and believe me, I'm not insensitive to the fact that some folks are going to have difficulty, whatever the increase is. But I think we ought to maybe just take that one point very much in mind and consider what we are getting for, the, for that amount of money. My tax increase is going to be somewhere in the neighborhood of $400, and 66% of that results in $0.10 cents, uh, per child for the year. That's my tax increase. Uh, and, and I think that uh, I'm getting a terrific buy for that amount of money. So I want to encourage you to not go any further uh, into reducing the school budget. We've got a terrific system. By all accounts, we've got outstanding administrators, and, and, and we get great results in terms of numbers of kids who go on to higher education and other careers and so on. So uh, thank you for the opportunity. Appreciate it. 
Anybody else? If you do wish to speak, please do just line right up at the podium. Name and address, please. Sorry, I just ran here. <laughs> My name is Stacy Newman. I live at 17 Windsor Pines Drive. I have three kids, a husband, a puppy, and some chickens. Less than the last time we spoke, a fox got them. <laughs> um, I know you've heard me before, and you'll hear from me again. I feel like I am the Lorax, and I speak for the trees. I'm here to speak for the children and for all the people in this town who didn't vote. And as we know, there are many of them. I was very frustrated after the last town meeting because I felt like there was a lot of misinformation. I don't think that's appropriate. The last discussion was that there would be $500,000 cut from the school budget and that that would not affect the schools. That's simply not accurate, and I'm frustrated that town councilors would spread that information and to suggest to the townspeople here that cutting $500,000 from the school budget, which was at level services, is not going to affect the children. I am the Lorax and I speak for the trees. $500,000 will cut a lot of services for those kids. Nobody here seems to be considering the long run. I know I keep using this analogy, but think of that movie, The Lorax. A couple trees were cut here, a couple trees were cut there, and soon, it was devastation. That is what is happening to Scarborough. We moved here in 2009. Scarborough was number five, I believe. It was number six the year after. It was number 10 last year. It's number 11 this year. It's a direct result of the budget being cut. I would ask you to not cut the budget by $500,000. I do not want it to be cut by $350,000 but I think that that is an appropriate compromise <coughs> considering that the budget failed. And I'll ask you to cut it by no more than that. I am the Lorax and I speak for the trees. Anybody else? All right, seeing none, I'm gonna close the public hearing and on to the regular motion, which is order number 15-048, which is the second reading on the proposed fiscal year 2016 school budget. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. And discussion. Well, don't all jump in. <laughs> so. uh, I'd like to make a motion to amend. Uh, and I will read it. <clears throat> uh, move to amend order 15-048 to require a reduction in expenditures in the school budget of $320,000 for a new gross educated, education operating budget of $43,473,756 and to authorize the additional use of $180,000 in school fund balance, resulting in a total reduction of the net budget of $500,000 and the Town of Scarborough raises as the local share for the education operating budget <laughs> the sum of $38,000,000 $294,379. And that was in the form of a motion. Is there a second? Second. And discussion? Well, you wanted to tell? We've had the benefit of the school board working hard at identifying uh, where they could achieve cuts, uh, and they wisely chose not to cut in the core academic programs uh, of our school system. Uh, they have, however, identified uh, $320,000 worth of cuts that will be uh, comprised of, uh, of various items that uh, have been enumerated earlier and, 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 and passed out. Uh, what I think this does is by using the fund balance monies, and there is a balance at the present time of 83,000, and we have been told by the school department's uh, finance director that uh, an additional 100,000 is certain to be secured from the present uh, operating budget year, ending June 30th, a few days from now, uh, uh, to give us the ability to add as additional revenue $180,000. Uh, this would allow us to still have a budget adjustment of $500,000. Uh, 
which has been a targeted goal. Uh, I think this is a fair balance, a much fairer balance than to put the entire burden on the school to cut $500,000. The monies from fund balances are monies that have been appropriated by the town uh, through the referendum process and through the budget approval process, uh, and they are available. Uh, it's, I think, most people's view that uh, not having the school run any material fund balance is probably a good idea, and there are actually state laws that <coughs> limit the amount of fund balance that can be run. Uh, by in using $180,000 of fund balance, we still would maintain the uh, policy, which the town council has, uh, to maintain a fund balance of 8.3% of the budget or more. And we would be able to do that as a result of uh, the use of this additional fund balance monies. Uh, so I would uh, uh, urge my counselors to vote for this because I think it is a fairer balance uh, of how to share the costs. Uh, I think that, uh, in fact, uh, in the future, the town should adopt its budget after the school referendum has passed. Because I think that this is a community issue. It's not a school issue or a municipal issue. It's a community issue. And where do we want to put our priorities? Uh, uh, I think uh, there's no one who would uh, deny that the schools have a very high priority. Uh, they maintain, for those who are conscious of taxes, they maintain uh, our property values. Uh, uh, for those who are conscious of a good school system, they maintain a high level of uh, uh, performance. Uh, so it, there's something in it for everyone, uh, and I think in this case uh, we, we are doing a disservice to put the entire burden on the school system when the school system is the cause of us improving our property values and as a consequence losing money from the state. Uh, and therefore I think this is a very fair balance. Um, before I, I'm going to cut you off for just a second, Jim, I see you have your hand. Um, can I have a, just a clarifying question to you, Tom, uh, based off of that comment? Um, I appreciate that the offered amendment would be an eight point would keep us within our eight point three and I appreciate the school department has a limit which has been waived currently of a three percent max in their um, reserve account. Where would that number bring that to in the in the undesignated fund for the school account balance? Uh, I'm not sure if I understand the question. Are you looking for a dollar amount? Yes, and what dollar what percentage would remain in the undesignated <coughs> fund for the school? This would effectively, as we know it today, though the current fiscal year ending next week, uh, once those books are closed, there may be additional fund balance. But um, here tonight, you asked me the question, I would say it effectively zeroes out the fund balance on the school. So it would be zero. Thank you. But the combined, I think to the statement made by Councilor Donovan, the combined, which includes the town's fund balance as well, would still be above the policy limit. Okay. Jim Murray? I, I would support this uh, motion uh, by Councillor Donovan for all the aforementioned um, points that he made. He made great points and I'm not going to reiterate them over again. I also feel, as you heard the last time, I was sticking on the 350. Um, um, so this, this allows the school to be looking at cuts that they've already looked at. It allows them to maintain programs that I think are important, and I'll remind people again, I'm a former teacher. I know the importance of educating the whole child. I know the importance of maintaining academics, but there are some things that go on in schools that there are kids who wouldn't be in school if it weren't for some of the extracurriculars and, and other things that go on that keep them there. And it's not just sports, it's you know just different things that go on in a school community. Um, I think that it makes sense to me, fiscally, to use the school fund balance at this point, given the situation that we're in in this town, rather than make the schools uh, cut programming that I think are essential to, to kids. Um, and for that reason, I, I would support this. 
and I encourage my fellow counselors to do so too because uh, I'm a little tired of the schools being the whipping boy for everything. Sean, you had a comment? Yeah, thank you. Um, I, I think it's important to note, um, first I want to thank Council Donovan for uh, putting forth the amendment. Um, I, but I think it's important to note that this is um, what I would compare as, as a procedural matter for clarification of what was intended by the Finance Committee and what was intended as part of the conversation originally. Um, I, at least I say that as the Chair of the Finance Committee when we talked about the adjustments at that level as well as at the Council level. Um, I do apologize if there is a uh, perception that there was some intent to mislead regarding the adjustments and cuts, but I had always intended to use as much of fund balance as possible, not um, keeping in mind that it's very difficult to know what that is before the actual fiscal year end. And I do trust Ms. Bolton, um, the, the school's finance director, to at least give us that projection. Um, and uh, you know, we'll deal with anything else beyond that in the next cycle, obviously. So uh, I kind of compare it to the efficiency main issue of forgetting the word and, um, in which their budget uh, went from like 50 million to 28. Um, we kind of forgot to word the last motion appropriately, and so this is a clarification and correction that at least is consistent with what my intent was. Peter? I guess a couple of points of clarification, Tom. The first is, if I understand this right, this doesn't change the overall mill rate from where we were with the 500. It just changes how we get there. Correct. So the, it still has that the same, stays the same. Has the same net impact on the taxpayer, which is part of our goal. Correct. Is that, is that correct? Correct. Two, and I understand this is the school surplus that we're talking about, not, not moving any funds or transferring funds, so that's fine. The third thing that I did hear earlier tonight, I just want to confirm, we did do an amendment last time that talks about we have a designated amount we think we're going to get from state funds, and to the extent that, that amendment will still hold, to the extent that we get any more than that from state funds, mm -hmm. that will come back to the taxpayer, and it's not part of this reserve that we're talking about, right? To the extent that it's known before By taxes August. are committed, yeah. yes. Okay. That's good. And so, and then, so then thirdly, I'll kind of piggyback on Sean. I, this week I've read a lot of things saying the, this council had an arbitrary number they chose when they came up with 500. But in fact, the 500, as Sean has indicated, we did look at the reserves. This did seem to be a reasonable number. As it's turning out, it is a reasonable number. So I think it's really important we all have honest and direct conversations. There's been a lot of stuff flying around. It wasn't an arbitrary number. There was some madness to it, if you will, or some sense to that madness. So with that, and then the third thing, though, when I think I'm going to piggyback on what um, Liam, you know, talk to all of us tonight. I want people to understand that where we are, though, we have now applied. The town has already transferred 225000 of its surplus to the school. Operating in the school budget this year is eight hundred and will be eight hundred and fifty five thousand dollars of reserve money. It basically clears out the reserve fund as you just heard. That means next year. That is about two percent of the school budget. So next year when we start, even with a level service budget, we're gonna start in the hole two percent because we no longer have these reserve funds. And we're going to have another 1% that has to do with a laptop computer. So what we're doing and what we're saying here is level service funding is about a 5% increase each year. Next year, when we sit here, to, Bill, to Liam's point, we're going to be having the same conversation and looking at a budget of about 9%. So I plead and I really encourage all of us, we need to think about a different process. So when we get to this point next year, a long-range planning process about what are we going to do to build a sustainable budget that is livable and acceptable to all of us. If we, it's hard to do when you only have a week or two to do it, but we need to start a process today that when we know we get here next year, we've had a long time to think about it, but we're just kicking the can down the road. We're going to be facing these same type of numbers a year from now. So let's think about it and work on that. And with that, I'll conclude. Jump in, Ed. Well, I just want to clarify one thing. This is really a replacement to the motion that we made last time, right? Yes. Yeah. This is so, okay. And the tax rate increase remains the same. Correct. Yes. Okay. All right, well, time for me to stop pointing up my, my opinion. I have no intention of supporting the amendment. And that is because for, uh, and I have some other comments later, for a multitude of reasons. Uh, the, the first one being I had 
no gray area of what my decision was at the last meeting. I said 500,000. I meant 500,000. And I expected that 500,000 to come out of some kind of combination of fund balance and some kind of combination of reduction. And that is still my expectation. And if we plug the hole of $180,000, we have done nothing to reduce the cost of services at that point. We're all we're doing is plugging a hole with rainy day money that will be an issue again next year. And as Peter pointed out, we need to fully think about how we are delivering, delivering services. Again, I'm going to repeat, a level service budget fails. Right, wrong, and different with our best voter turnout ever, that budget fails. It's my intention to support a budget that is something less than level services, not plug it full of rainy day money. So, I have some other comments that will come later, but as far as the amendment, that is my comment for now. Is there anybody else that wishes to speak? Seeing none, all those in favor of the amendment? One, two, three. And all those opposed? One, two, three. The amendment fails by defeat, by uh, stalemate. So, back to the main motion. Does anybody want to discuss? The main motion? Thank you. Um, really to address of, um, a lot of public input that has been received not only here tonight but also privately through email and other communications and groups and so forth. Um, crafting a budget um, isn't necessarily easy. It's like using an eight ball. And while it's somewhat comedic, um, it is true to the assessment that um, no matter how hard you shake it and no matter what question you ask, you're never going to get a clear answer because you never know what everyone wants to believe. And um, while we all have constituents that um, have supported us in the past, one thing I have learned over many years of running is that um, even the most ardent supporter um, um, can change their mind and have a different perspective after an election. So trying to understand where to go on a budget is um, very sensitive and it's very personal. I agree that we need to acknowledge what the outcome of the last referendum was. And the fact is, is that the citizens of Scarborough did tell us that it was too high. Um, indifferent, however you want to look at that, it was too high. The reason why I support the 500, I prefer, and based on the initial intentions, was that there was a use of fund balance because I do strongly believe that fund balance and less fiscally required under accounting standards or governmental regulations should be returned to the tax base. Mm -hmm. And that's what the fund balance and the proposal in the previous amendment would have done. Um, and that is um, a number one priority when um, especially revenues um, that come from the citizens um, are in excess of what our expenditures are, and that's what has happened um, in many situations. Um, the second piece that is being forgotten that needs to be um, remembered as part of this, um, while in, to some extent I'm using that eight ball, there is additional funds that we're waiting to know whether or not we're receiving from the state regarding the educational budget. Uh, but right now, um, and I'm, I know that people will sit there and say we shouldn't be political, but the fact is, let's call a spade a spade, as one person said, we have a governor who's playing games, who hasn't approved a budget that would actually directly impact and help our taxpayers. But yet we're, being, we're forgetting that. We're not placing responsibility for that lack of leadership where it belongs. Uh -huh. Instead, we're, we're having a class warfare between the state's sources of revenues to its municipalities mm -hmm. and the local municipality by, distra by di distracting us. It wasn't inappropriate to clap right now, so. Okay. And I meant that wholeheartedly. Okay. <laughs> I, I now, so just to refresh, um, the legislature, by the way, and the Senate voted unanimously to support the educational budget at $40 million a year for the next two years. And while they kind of warn us not to try to project and calculate what that could do, but I've got uh, a couple of analysts that have said that could be a direct taxpayer savings of anywhere from six hundred to seven hundred thousand dollars, and I'm crossing my fingers. That actual reduction for us, combined with the five hundred thousand dollars, is actually one point two million dollars that takes our rate from four point seven five to three point five. While it might be still high for some people. It is the compromise that leadership is required to find in a difficult situation that best represents an entire community because we're not going to make 100% of the people happy 100% of the time. In fact, we probably won't make half of them happy half of the time. So 
we need to focus, we all share in finding that solution. I think that the school board and the town council, every single one of us, including those who may have a different opinion and we should make higher adjustments, have shown great leadership this year. We've been uh, criticized because of the process that we've undertaken, but yet we've taken twice as long to go through the financial process of reviewing our budget, having a conversation, being transparent, being more engaged with the community, having a public forum, but yet we're told and criticized we're trying to rush this. It's inaccurate. I support the $500,000 reluctantly, but I think it's a fair compromise. I wish that the amendment had passed, but I think mm -hmm. that the direction that we've taken is appropriate. Um, I do agree with Councillor um, um, Hayes, we do need to take this to the next step, and that has been one of our promises in our combined <coughs> effort with the school board and this council is to talk about the value statements of our community and what priority we place on the broader perspectives, education, community services, tax reform, um, aging in place programs that I talk about for those families that have been here for generations that can't continue affording this. I get it. I understand it but I'm also one of those parents. I've never had a child in the school system, but I appreciate what it provides because I see the value of my home increasing as a result of it. Um, I encourage everyone um, not only to support this budget in the community and the request for the $500,000 adjustment, but I hope that the council does so tonight as well and we get all into um, the same camp, I hope. Hey, Mary. Um, I, I'm extremely disappointed that the amendment didn't pass, but um I'm, I'm glad we put it out there so that people understand at least where I'm coming from with this. I also will reluctantly, very reluctantly, support the $500,000 cut uh, for all the aforementioned um, things that I, that, I, that I spoke of. Um, I agree with Councillor Hayes and with Councillor Rabine that, and I will from Councillor Donovan also, that the process next year uh, needs to be looked at a little more closely. I, 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 it just boggles my mind that every year we're in this place. Even though this year we ended up, you know, we had, I thought, a great process with the finance departments of both the school and the town council to come up with what looked to me to be a fairly reasonable and open budget, and yet there's all this vitriol and rhetoric and discord and hate and all this foolishness that goes on around the school budget it just blows my mind because I, I know you know I come from a different place I don't have any children in the school department anymore either mine's on her own sports herself thank God and pays her own student loans thank God but you know she's a product of the Scarborough School Department and <laughs> Scarborough did well by her um, I hate to see the schools, as I mentioned, being the so-called whipping boy for bigger issues that Councillor Babine mentioned. The fact that we have a state government that's dysfunctional and doesn't value our future and doesn't value children um, as a state government. Uh, kids are our future. Uh, I'm not going to be around here forever, and neither are you. Uh, they're coming. They're coming up behind us, uh, and we do need to support them. Um, so I will reluctantly support this 500,000. Again, I'm very disappointed that this amendment didn't pass because I thought it was a good solution, and that we would be returning some money instead of having it sit in a fund balance. We'd be putting it back to work, but that's the way it goes. Uh, Phil. I think a $500,000 adjustment in the budget is uh, an appropriate adjustment. Uh, I think using a combination of cuts, uh, two-thirds cuts, one-third fund balance was an appropriate compromise, uh, but we're still managed on that, three to three. Uh, it's my understanding that the school still has $83,000, and Tom can confirm this for me, uh, in fund balance monies that are available, which would not push the uh, 
8.3% would not push us below the 8.3% figure that we have as a policy for maintaining fund balance. And I would ask Tom if that is correct. Yes, that's been verified. That exists uh, and it, uh, is based on audited statements. So yes, that exists. Uh, I would ask uh, uh, if a further motion could, uh, to amend would be in order. Uh, you can offer any motion you want. Uh, the essence of the motion would be to use the $83,000 uh, to offset $83,000 in costs, which would be incurred by the school district without the use of that money. <clears throat> so that rather than a $500,000 uh, cut in the budget, it would be $417,000 cut. <clears throat> and the additional $83,000 to come to a budget adjustment of $500,000 would be made up with the balance of the fund balance monies that is still, still available from the school board. Uh, uh, while I think I probably could edit the motion that I originally offered to make that correct. Uh, can, can, I'm, I'm going to be a pain here um, <laughs> for for the sake of um, clarity, and, and, and I'm going to kind of push maybe Robert's rules. I'm going to ask you to reduce that to writing. Yes. And in all fairness, let's take a five-minute recess in order to allow for you to Thank have you. time to do that. Thank you. So we'll reconvene in five minutes.
No, this is, this right. is a motion to amend. All right, we are back in, back at it again. So, um, uh, Councillor uh, Donovan, <laughs> would you like to offer your, offer your motion? Thank you, Madam, <laughs> Madam Chairperson. Um, move to amend Order 15048 to require a reduction in expenditures in the school budget of $417,000 for a new gross education operating budget of $43,376,756 
and to authorize the additional use of $83,000 in school fund balance, resulting in a total reduction of the net budget of $500,000, and the Town of Scarborough raises as the local share for the education operating budget the sum of $38,294,379. Second. And discussion. So. What I see us, we all agree on the 500. Uh, what we are close on, but separated by, is whether uh, the school should bear that wholly on, their, on its own. We're kind of past the point where the municipal budget could be used as a means of bearing some of that, uh, though I think if the referendum were to fail, I would, I would actually propose that we analyze that issue because I don't think the school should bear a lot. I think it should be an appropriate amount, but I don't think it should be solely the school's responsibility. We're kind of three people thinking one way, three people thinking the other. Uh, if we vote on the main motion and it's three to three, it fails. We've gotten nowhere. So we're in a place where finding a compromise is necessary. It's not just favorable, it's essential. So uh, that's why I've proposed that $83,000, which may seem small in the context of a $43 million budget, but as we've seen from the consequences, as uh, uh, School Finance Chair Caezo has explained, it has real consequences. Uh, and we can reduce that impact considerably, not totally, uh, and it obviously errs on the side of it being closer to a $500,000 cut than a $320,000 cut. But it is a compromise that all six of us could vote for because it is $500,000. Uh, and it is monies that are already available uh, uh, as fund balance monies uh, on the books of the school district. So uh, that's the reason why I think it's essential that we find common ground where all six of us can vote. And right now, we're three to three. And so it's going to fail. That's why I think it would be a very appropriate for us to talk about a compromise. And they have? Gentlemen first. Peter. And I guess I mean, these conversations kind of ebb and flow and stuff. I guess what I was, what I was hoping to hear tonight and I didn't hear, which, which has me concerned, which kind of harkens back to my earlier comments. There's been a theme where we really discount what voters have told us. Oh, that doesn't represent all those that didn't vote, really were voting for the budget. Taxpayers have been pretty clear about what they're telling us. And, and what I really had hoped to hear tonight, we need to listen to them. They're our constituents. They're sending us a message, and they've sent us a message for four years that these types of numbers are just unsustainable. And I would have loved to hear tonight, yeah, we know this is a tough year, we haven't had time to work on it, but we're going to make a commitment that next year we're not going to start at these 7, 8, 9% budget increases. We're going to put a process in place, we're going to work toward it, and you're asking for support this year to get to a place. I haven't heard that. Um, I'd love to hear that. But I, I'm really concerned about is that we're kicking the can down the road and we have no tangible plan. I haven't heard anybody buy into a plan to do anything different for next year, and that really, really concerns me. So I think that's a bigger issue. I think this, is, this would make some sense if we had that commitment to a different process and a different outcome next year, but I'm not sure, I'm not sure I hear that buy-in. And, and I think we have to listen to taxpayers. It's been very clear. It's unsustainable. Ed? Um, $500,000 in my mind is very, very easy to come by without making any adjustments. There's $616,000 in the budget out there for cost of living increases. Now, we've, we've discussed this before, but 
that has absolutely no impact on any programs, any education for any of the kids. It means getting the teachers and the other people together and say, hey, let's give up at least four, a part of it this year and, that's, and, and go on with it. Second of all, I think the whole budget, even with a $500,000 cut, is too high. 4.75% still. Too large an increase for the taxpayers to bear. Every single year, it's the same thing. I can't support any of this stuff. Okay, hey, Maureen. Um, uh, with all due respect to, to uh, Councillor Hayes, um, I, I believe I said that I would support looking at, you know, next year putting into play, you know, I agree with you, is, is some of the things we need to do, um, <clears throat> as well as perhaps looking at doing the municipal budget after the school budget. Um, I hear from a number of constituents who are really disturbed by cutting the school budget. I mean, it cuts both ways, and I think it depends on who, you know, who you, who you know, who you talk to, who talks to you, who sends you emails and whatever. So, I mean, it does cut both ways. What Councilor Donovan is trying to, to point out here is, come on, let's, let's all back off a little bit, give a little bit, do something that's somewhat reasonable here, perhaps, and because it's going to go to the voters again anyway. It's going out July 7th, um, and I would I would uh, strongly suggest that we support this motion so that we don't have a three to three deadlock at some point here. Um, I'm somewhat indifferent on the issue. Um, I'm, I, I actually tend to look at the issue a little bit more macroly. I mean, this is a $43 million budget, $43.4 million budget, in which we're discussing and having a debate about $83,000, which, um, if you take into consideration the conversation that happened at the committee level and even at the previous council, um, there was no expressed indifference regarding how that $500,000 was going to be achieved. We fully discussed, and I think that many of us, if not a majority, had the expectation that there was going to be a balance between expenditure cuts as well as reserves. Um, I support the $83,000 more from a principled basis rather than a real um, hardcore, you know, absolutely must have to happen because it is such a, um, uh, such a small amount and it does provide relief. Um, with respect to the conversations around um, the value statements, I, I thought I expressed that I, I'm definitely in favor of those value conversations. I don't think it's germane to the main motion, let alone to any of the amendments, um, and is really shouldn't be contingent upon what we're proving today about what conversations we're going to have tomorrow. Um, so I don't disagree with the statements. And the fact is, is that, um, with all due respect to the gentleman, um, we've, had, we've been presented with one amendment. No other amendments regarding even that topic have been presented. So to have a conversation, it, nothing's been presented to have a conversation around that. So if there's going to be some type of amendment made, then we can have that conversation. Um, I just don't believe it's, it's germane to the, this year's budget. I think it's absolutely relevant um, regarding next year's budget and the prioritization, and we're going to undertake that and um, advance um, that collaborative approach that has that conversation around it. So, again, sorry for being long-winded. From a principal perspective, I agree with this adjustment because it's consistent with what we discussed in the Finance Committee. I think it's at least consistent with why I made the decision to support the $500,000 previously, um, and I hope this moves forward. Anybody else? Wow, back to me again. So, oh. um, I, I would hope, you, you know, I, I'm going to go back to something that I um, had mentioned earlier. Uh, and I have some comments for, for after that, that aren't necessarily pertaining to the member, but, but when we get back to the, to the main motion. Um, I'm going to repeat that 500000 was a compromise for me. And I, I, I meant that, and I stand behind that vote, and that is a compromise to me. And although I won't support the 83000 I, I would hope that, that, that the thought of holding the entire budget hostage because I can't support an 83000 because I've already compromised once it, it isn't really come, coming to fruition. But um, again, I do, I do have some other comments that, that I'll sit on for now. But... Um, other than that, is there anybody else that wishes to have a discussion? 
Right? All those in favor? Three. And all those opposed? That is three. Back to the main motion. Discussion. <coughs> Don't all jump up and down. Um, it's not really about the motion because I think that uh, we've all expressed ourselves about whether we support, reject, or, or can at least compromise to that. I do want to mention that um, being the chair of the Finance Committee, I, I am going to take it upon myself with the help of, um, I'm going to at least reach out uh, to Chris Siazzo, the Finance Chair on the school side, and review the public comments and the questions that have been, sh uh, been shared so that we can answer all of the questions because there's been some comments during the recess about clarification regarding the percentage increase, particularly on the school side, both on the tax, I mean, the differentiation between the tax portion as well as the, um, the dollar percentage increase and where that uh, breakdown is. It's, I do want to say it's been provided in the past as part of the every conversation, but I will make sure and work with Chris to make sure everyone receives additional information so that they understand that. Thank you very much. Any other discussion? All right, well, I get to be the bad guy this evening. That's okay. I, uh, <coughs> I'm going to talk for a few moments about um, some of the comments and some of the emails and, and some of the things that I've heard. Um, I do want to repeat something that um, has been floating around, just to, again as a clarity. The laptop program is not in the operating budget. If you are voting against the operating budget because you are against the laptop program, you are doing it to no avail because it's not in there. Um, you know, certainly, and then, and um, I might be mistaken, but there is other means if you're disgruntled with that. There are other due processes. Um, you can certainly, they, they are somewhat weighty, but there there is a, a petition to overturn and then maybe some of these other due courses and processes if you wish to, to pursue those. Uh, but, but the program itself is not in the operating budget. There is no million dollars in that operating budget to support the laptop program. Um, so please, again, if, if you feel that that's an inappropriate move, don't, don't penalize the school department for something that's not even on what's being voted on. Um, the next thing I'd like to say is, um, you know, I, I, I go back to, um, to an earlier thought that I had had, and, and I do appreciate that there is um, 250, realistically, that we think is probably in that budget. I'm sorry, let, let me backtrack that thought. Um, Ultimately, as a council, we cannot tell the school department how, when, where, or what to spend their money on. We do not have line item authority. It does not exist. However, that does not mean that you do not sit here at this council table and suggest where you think it might come from. And I'm, I'm going to advocate here for a minute. We all know there's about 250000 that sits in that budget every year. And so I have an expectation that's probably going to come, come from there as a place to start. We know there's another 50,000 likely coming with some shared services, so now we're somewhere in the vicinity of the 300,000. What that leaves us with is about 180,000. What we're really talking about is a $180,000 cut. And when I say cut, I mean a reduction in the increase request. I do not mean a cut to our schools. I mean a cut to the increased request which is, again, what I, my belief is of what the validation vote was. It was a question of reducing the increased request and not having level services. So I'm going to move back for a moment here. Although I appreciate that you cannot just dispense with your contracts, I will say I've heard time and time again that they, uh, the school department advocates in the best interests of the children. They're not here to advocate for the taxpayers. That is our job. They're here to do what is in the best interests of the students. My expectation as a resident and as a taxpayer is to do the best interest of the students. The best interest is not cutting their programs. If there is not at least a base discussion with your staff about the 180,000, you are not honoring the position you hold. And that is my opinion. We are looking at substantial increases, and Ed Blaze has a point. Several years ago, as a municipality, we went to our unions and we said, can you help us? We have a problem. 
We are losing funding. We don't know what to do. Would you please work with us in the best interest of this community? My expectation is that the school department will do the same, and they will go to their staff, which is their biggest cost driver, and say, can you work with us? Can you protect the kids? Can you do something to help us? It's $180,000. When you're talking somewhere in the level of 4% increases on the higher end of administration, I would think that is the first conversation you're going to have. And now that I've reined my temper in a little bit, <laughs> I'll end my comments right about there. So, on the main order, all those in favor? Roll call. Well, roll call. Roll call. I'm sorry. Thank you, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead and start. Councilor Baybine? Yes. Councilor Donovan? No. Councilor Katarina? No. Councilor uh, Hayes? I'm confused now. Which roll call? Yes or no on the on the 500 on the on the original order? Yeah. On the original order? Yes. Councilor Blaze. We're voting on the budget, right? Yep. Yeah. No. On um, as we approved in first reading. No, it's with no, a five hundred thousand dollar reduction. No. Okay. Councilor Yes. Hi. So we are. Tie vote. We're a tie vote. Budget. Thanks. Anybody want to reconsider? We want to go back through? <laughs> <laughs> I implore the council to keep working this evening. We have a validation vote right. scheduled for July 7th. Uh, mm -hmm. We need five votes to even reconsider. So I will offer. I, I, oh, I, it has I to be moved by somebody who voted, 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 voted no. So would somebody who voted no? Who voted no other you? than myself. <laughs> I agree with you, Ed, on something. Yeah. <laughs> well, do you think the budget is too high? I'm not going no, there. They, to go <laughs> they wanted to go lower. Uh, okay, then I'll change my vote. Yes. You would like to offer a motion for reconsideration for our vote? Yes, please. Go through oh that God. process. So, um, Ed, I'm, if I'm understanding you correctly, you're offering a motion to reconsider? So we can. Yeah. And I will second. All those in favor of reconsidering our roll call vote? That is one, two, three, four. All those opposed? Back to our roll call vote. Um, point of order? Yep. I, I believe the clerk said that it required a uh, five, 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 five based on council rules, so that the motion actually for reconsideration failed. failed. What is this? Oh. You need five in the firm to, to reconsider a matter. This is embarrassing, guys. Come on. Yeah. Well, come just, on. Yeah. Just so you um, appreciate what, hap I, I what happens, I believe, if you do not come to any further decision, what you would uh, return the same budget back to the voters on July 7th. Yep. The one that they turned down? Yes, correct. Failing any further action by the council, uh, I believe that would go back to the voters. Can we have a five-minute recess, please? Thank you. Good job. Good job.
know we're minus one. Where's Sean? Uh, uh, where's Sean? Uh, let's get Sean. Well, yeah. Still trying to go down. I'm going to be towards the tail end. So. Well, it's going to be, are you going to, you're going to vote for it, right? I mean, I'm going to vote on it. No. We're, we're, we're so short I'm one, so. <laughs> I'm just collecting trouble. My little lady. We'd be smiling about it. Are you going to vote for it? Yeah. Because this you have to be back in Waterville. That has nothing to do with it. I'm there. You All right. They voted. So, thank you for bearing with us while we figured out our own rules. Um, <clears throat> so, would somebody like to offer a motion? Peter. Ah. Uh. <laughs> No. <laughs> uh, having voted against the main motion, uh, I am entitled to uh, move for reconsideration, and I would like to do so at this time. Second. And um, it is a vote of five in order to reconsider an item. So all those in favor in reconsideration is one, two, three, four, five, six. And that for reconsideration is our original order. I buried. Bear with me. Just order. <laughs> order number 15-048. Is there any further discussion um, or any new discussion on, on this order? Oh, come on. What? Calm down. Sean. We just had a display of a lack of leadership for what we're being criticized for from every single one of us because they're completely confused on what is going on. I can't, I can't believe we just went through that exercise. And for us not to jump at raising our hands to speak <clears throat> speaks volumes as well. So, uh, well, ev well, everybody's jumping now, so <laughs> there's a good news. Uh, I think Bill beat you, Jean Marie. That's okay. Uh, I think there was some confusion uh, 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 from a parliamentary point of view. Uh, by one of my fellow counselors who feels strongly about uh, budgets, and I totally respect his opinion because it's a very principled opinion. And that confusion <coughs> led to a three to three vote. Therefore, while I voted for against uh, the main motion and plan to vote again against the main motion, I think in fairness to the council process and in fairness to advancing this matter, uh, I would like to be able to uh, see us re-vote on the main motion. Thank you, Bill. Jim Marie. Uh, for the same reasons that uh, Bill has given, um, there was another counselor here who was confused by the process, which it's easy to do if you're not used to Robert's rules and parliamentary procedure. Um, and I certainly want to give that person an opportunity um, to vote on the main motion, so that is the reason that I am voting to reconsider at this point. Anybody else? So I must be that person? <laughs> 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 um, so just to um, make exceptionally sure that we are all very clear clear this time this will be a roll call vote on our original our original proposal from our first reading of a reduction of 500,000 so the roll call vote would be a yes to support the first first reading or a no not to support what the first reading was so um, let's let's go again. Councilor <laughs> Bayvine. Yes. Councilor Donovan. No. Councilor Caterina. No. Councilor Blaze. Yes. Councilor Hayes. Yes. Council, uh, Chair Council Chair Holbrook. Yes. Now we have a vote. That now you've got a vote. <laughs> now we've got a vote. So on to um, there is no councilor comments this evening because it's a special meeting. So our next item is item four, which is a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All those in favor. That is unanimous.